Like many people recently, I've turned my hand to gardening with varying results, meaning by which little success and big disappointments. My green fingers seem to be the kiss of death for most anything in the plant world, except weeds which thrive under my tender care. My biggest disappointment has been the lawn. It's been badly overrun with moss and I've treated it recently with moss killer. I don't understand it. I carefully followed the instructions to the very letter, but am now left with large, unsightly, bald patches all over the place. But never give in and don't admit defeat. One wet Saturday afternoon, a week or so ago, I scattered grass seed on the lawn, taking care to sow the seed on the brown patches. And although I live in hope, I fear it all fell on stony ground, rocks, weeds and briars, because so far nothing has come up. So I'm wondering who the patron saint of gardeners are because I think I should pray to them. In the Gospel today, Jesus speaks of sowing the seed of God's word in the world. And I think it's really important to note that the seed is generously sown, liberally scattered, nowhere is left unsown, a measure perhaps of the generosity of God's heart that the seed of his word is addressed to all without exception. Reflecting on the parable, the one who sows the seed would hardly make a good farmer. A good farmer would surely sow his precious seed only in rich soil, where he would be assured of an abundant harvest. But the sower of the seed in this parable is reckless and careless, sowing everywhere without distinction. As a priest, I've often found this parable deeply reassuring because you're sometimes tempted to measure yourself by the exacting standards of worldly success where yield, productivity and numbers are the measure of how well you're doing. But in the life of the church, there can be no room for such a worldly approach to the proclamation of God's kingdom. For we must sow the good news of the gospel, broad and wide, leaving no corner unsown, no rock, no stony ground or briar patch unseeded. Once sown, the seed is left to the providence of God, to God's good grace and the life-giving action of the Holy Spirit, who alone can bring about an abundant harvest of good works. But it's also up to us. We have our part to play, so we must ask ourselves, what welcome does the seed of faith find in our hearts, in our lives, our homes and parishes? What kind of soil does God's word find there? Do we have a generous and open heart, free to respond to the demands and challenges of living as God's child in the fullness of our Father's love and the courage to share that joy as a child of God and the salvation it brings to all we meet. If we're honest, are our lives worthy of God's word, worthy to give it a home, to reflect its glory and allow it to flourish with the endless goodness 
and the abundance that God would bless our lives with. Perhaps our lives are already too full, too crowded with the concerns and pleasures of this world to have any time for God. And often our lives have no room for God. He is left out of the reality of our daily living. If we do want God in our lives, he always stands there at the door, waiting to be admitted. Never doubt that. God only awaits our invitation to enter into our lives. And what of our parish communities? Are we open to the challenges and change God's word might demand of them? Or have we become stale, stagnant, dead, fossilised in the past, unwilling and unable to accept the challenges of the modern world? Have we allowed ourselves and our parishes to become an irrelevance in the world today? Instead of being a living sign of the joy and new life that Christ brings into our world, are we an opposite and contrary sign of complacency and self-satisfaction? As Pope Francis continually asks, do we convey the joy of the gospel or do we rather look as if we've just come back from a funeral? God's word is sown every time we hear the gospel proclaimed. Does that word fall on deaf ears in our lives? Do we listen attentively and lovingly to the word of God? Because that word is spoken directly and personally to me. God speaks to me, but do I listen? Open my heart to his message. It is a message of life, of life in abundance. And if we allow God's word to find a home in us, it will yield a harvest a hundredfold, transform our lives, our parishes and our church.